Hey folks, Matt here. I'm going to do something a little different today. I've got Eric with me. We're here in Worcester, Massachusetts in his home, his childhood home. We're going to yeah. see some pictures later and all that yeah, fun yeah, yeah. stuff on the walls. Uh, anyways, what we're going to do today is Eric is going to show me 10 records from his vinyl collection, albums I've never heard, largely don't know a lot about. Eric's going to tell us a little bit about them. We're going to talk about them as well. And then later in the episode, I'm going to listen to these albums and then give you my opinions on each and every one of them. That'll be after he gets back to Vermont. Yeah. There'll be a little <laughs> bit of a time lapse. For us, it's days. For you, it's It'll be seconds. minutes. Not Maybe yet. seconds. Who yeah. knows? Anyways, definitely stick around. So you've probably seen Eric in these videos before, at least a couple episodes of the Record Store Report. Yeah, well, Eric Bloom, by the way, yeah, yeah. not related to the BOC no, guy no, 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 whatsoever. No, but I am a big fan of BOC, the classic metal band from, Definitely. from America. Yep. So Eric, we've known each other for about 37 years. Yeah, around now. Yeah, yeah, it was the early 80s. It was the tail end of sophomore year of high school, yeah, yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. both loved the metal. Yeah. Had teenage years full of going to Strawberries records and tapes yeah, yeah. and albums. And buying all the the vintage, the import stuff in particular, you yeah. know, Venom and Raven. Oh and yeah, big time. All those yeah. bands. And even even in the tail end of the '80s, uh, Newbury Comics came around, and we'd go to the Newbury Comics that were the, the closest one was in Framingham, yep. which is between Worcester and Boston. So it was a little bit of a ride, but it was worth it. We also had Rocking Horse Records. Remember yeah, yeah, yeah. George. Yeah, was yeah. His name? yeah, yeah. Yeah, his name was George. He was just in Worcester for a, like a brief period of time and then he moved up to Fitchburg yeah which is north of Worcester and, and he then, sold all metal yeah it was just metal yeah most extreme amazing. metal I, I wish he had, yeah I wish his shop was around when I had a better job I would have bought right. so much shit there. yeah seriously yeah <laughs> so yeah um, we're here in your house and um, we'll, we'll see some of the, the wall the pictures on the wall yeah, yeah, some of them go back to how far 1980. Back, back. Yeah, there's some stuff something. up there that's been up there since the 80s and there's some yeah. stuff that's from the 90s and, yeah. and, and I just lazy and this never changed them. sure and in this room here that we're in this is more modern yep this has been like the last 20 years of accumulation of yeah stuff because uh, yeah. like a lot of cds because i buy cds besides vinyl and a lot of them come in slip cases they call yep. them sure and in like the old long boxes yeah i yep. i put them up on the walls yeah here's some of the slip cases right here there they are but so, uh, getting to the vinyl, you have 10 records for me that yep. I largely don't know anything about. Yeah, 10 different bands. Mo yep. Most of it's death metal because I'm a huge death metal fan. Yep. But I do love most genres of metal. I, sure. I, mean, I don't really care for new metal and and that, right. that, that ilk. Sure. But I know a lot of people do, so yep. I don't harsh on them for that. Cool. But yeah, it's mostly death metal, but there is some thrash in here too. Sure. All yeah. right. So we'll get to that All right. in, a, in a second. Yep. This is Dead Congregation. All right. And it's a death metal band from Greece. And uh, this is, I believe this is their most recent release. It's just a two song EP. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's released on CD at all. I think it's a vinyl only release. Are the songs long? Sometimes when they put two songs on an EP, they're usually like 10 minutes long. Uh, it becomes a borderline I don't think, album. I don't, I don't think they're that long. I think they're just, it's, yeah. it, from the grooves, you could tell that one song is definitely, the second song is definitely the longer yeah, of the yeah. two songs. Yeah. But what's weird about the EP is that usually when there's two songs, songs one side will be one song and then the other side will be the other but for yeah. this one it, the both songs are on both sides, both sides. It, it's it's kind of yeah. weird it, it, but it's reversed like yeah the song starts side one yep and then other side it ends this other during side during the classic vinyl days at radio stations uh djs would get copies of records like that singles and would have the same song on both sides in case they scratched a side they had another side to still play live and like most modern vinyl, yep. it comes with a poster of the cover art as well. Fantastic. And, uh, these guys are really, really good death metal. Um, uh, uh, it's hard to compare who, who they sound like, mm -hmm. but I, I did get to see them live a few years ago. They played at Rouse here in Worcester. Right. With, uh, who else played? Uh, Pissgrave, Mausoleum, and Desolate. Yep. It was a great, great show. Cool. I mean, it was, they, they were so good live, so I, I totally recommend this, Matt. That what are some you, of your favorites on here? Uh, I'd say that probably Redempt you got two songs. Is, uh, so what are you yeah, gonna do? I, I, I'd, right. I'd say Redemptive Immolation is the better of the two songs, but okay. they both are really, really good. Nice. And they also have, um, I believe, they have 
two full lengths. And Show the back too as well. Two, they have two full lengths and they have two EPs as well, alongside this EP as yep. well. And I know the name of their first album is called Graves of the Archangels. Okay, cool. And it's really, really good as well. Yeah, we'll check that out. And Dead Congregation. They're Greek. I'm half Greek. Yeah, they are. That, 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 that was is. one of the, the side in factors of why I wanted to show him because right uh, he's, he's Greek. Yeah, right on. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Okay, next up, we're still in the letter D. This is Death Hammer. This is a Norwegian, I, I want to say that they have a mixture of black metal and thrash metal and maybe a little bit of death metal mixed the in there. The logo's speed really metal. saturated. Like but, almost, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. But this is their first album, Phantom Knights, uh, re-release on Head, Head, Headbangers Records. Love Not that so, label. Mm, yeah. Such a great label. Yep. But, uh, th that last album that I showed, it was just uh, it was just traditional black Yep. But uh, from the Dead Congregation, but the Death Hammer one is definitely a, a, a cool variant. Okay. I want to pull it out. There's a, also a lyric insert, and with the, with this one is. Yep. Uh, nope. Little tricolor there. Blue, orange, and clear. I want to say something ish. Yeah, clearish. <laughs> yep. But this is a nifty little album. Yep. Cool. And mostly, when you think of Norway, you think of black metal. So it's kind of cool to to see a, a thrashy type band coming, sure, out, yeah, coming yeah. out of the, the Norwegian area. Yeah. And I highly recommend these guys. This is their first album, and they, I believe they have three others. Okay. Uh, my first introduction to them was, uh, I, I think it was their uh, second one called Onward to the Pits. Okay. But Phantom Knights. Cool, flip it around, love Death, it. Death Hammer. See the back. Yep. Cool, favorites. Cool, cool artwork. Favorites from this, the, the opening track, Gates of Hades, is great. Okay. Ahmed Assassins. Right. Tornado Blitzkrieg. I mean, come on now. Great title. How can you go wrong with a Tornado Blitzkrieg? That's why I say. But you know, I totally recommend them. But I've never seen these guys live. Yeah. That would be a cool, cool concert to see these nice. guys in concert. Once concerts get to be like normal again. Yeah, yeah, cool. And this is the band Innsmouth from Australia. And this is just the EP with four songs on it. Cool. And I believe it's nice Lovecraft reference. Seriously, uh, yep. I'm a huge fan of H.P. Lovecraft. So if a band yep. has a, a name or an album that ref references his works or yep. his creations, I will give that band a chance. And classic Innsmouth, Black, classic Black, and Innsmouth was a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah, total no-brainer. Yep. I mean, look at the cover artwork. Yep, some satyr. Yep, serenading the goat with his flute. With his pecker, As they are with, with want his, to do. With his pecker out and everything. <laughs> sure, and why not? <laughs> but it is this good, like, atmospheric death metal from Australia. Yep. Sadly, they only released a few things. This is actually the demo yep. in vinyl form. Okay. And then they released an, an EP, like a 7-inch, called She Goat. Mm -hmm. And then they have a full length that I have on CD called yep. uh, some, something uh, with Elder Sign in the title. Yeah, right. But Consumed by Elder Sign. That's the name of the album. Cool. But uh, you know, I, I think you'll like these guys. Uh, the, the, nice. the, the, I don't think they get like too too blasty, fast, fast, fast. Sure, it, sure. It's, it's more along the lines of like the bolt thrower or benediction right. or humiliation from Middle Asia. You know, great, good slow plotting. Yeah, good stuff. Flip around. And here's the four songs. The tracks there. You know, I mean, they mentioned Shubnigirath and the Night yeah. Gaunts. I mean, right. That's a selling point right there. There it is. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'll be excited to check that out. And, and Australian, like I said before. Right on. Australia's got some great bands. Cool. Cool. Okay, up next is an American band. This is one of the older ones that I'm showing him. This is the band Morbid Saint. Now, from, I've heard from, of this band from, from, from I, uh, Wisconsin. And I've seen this. I've seen this cover before, but it's the fake eight Eddie basically. Yeah, totally. Right. This is a re-release uh, yeah. on uh, Century Media. Never heard them. But uh, I'm not sure what label they originally released this album on. It's a sure. cool gatefold. It opens up and it's got the lyrics and yep. band picture and. The old, uh, I think it's the cover of their demo. Yeah, probably. That, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's traditional black. Yeah. No, it's yeah. not. Yep. It's, it's purple. Surprise. You get surprises too now. Yeah, seriously. I sometimes right. I forget. Purple. And pull that up. <laughs> yeah. Purple. Right. Um, it's got the logo on the label and Sweet. everything. Sweet, yeah. And I did get to see Morbid Saint the one time I went to Maryland yeah. Death Fest back in 2012, I want to yeah. say it was a year. It was like the 10th. What year. year was this album originally? This album came out in, uh, I think it was 1988. Okay. I know it was the late 80s. Yeah. And they did record a so second. So Morbid Angel and Armored Saint are around at that time. Yes. It's kind of like that. And then these guys... Uh, I, I consider them almost like the American creator, the way okay. the, the way the, the guy sings. and, and uh, Yeah. 
it's not a happy thrash like anthrax and stuff right. like that it's a harsh thrash are like we talking the, like more classic uh creator yeah or more create, sort of power metally no the, the classic creator, creator like like the, the 80s like okay. the pleasure, pleasure to kill terrible right. certainty that type of creator gotcha before he changed his vocals and renewal and all that right. stuff sure you know and i highly recommend it and favorite tracks on this one uh the, the opening track lock up your children's grave right. burnt the stake my fa absolute favorite though is the very last song beyond the gates of hell cool when i saw him live i lost my mind when they played because yeah. actually when they played at maryland death fest they played this whole album wow it was sick nice, <laughs> nice. cool and morbid saint i'm excited to check that one out oh you're gonna love definitely. it definitely we're in the letter m now well we were the last one i love that it's alphabetical by the way yeah just loving that uh, yeah i forgot to mention that we were on m at the last one morbid saint the next one is another m band this is mortem there's a yeah. number of mortems if you go on the metal archives you'll see that there's quite a few that bands yep. that use this title and this is the band mortem from peru and there are I, actually a few in South America, right? Yeah, yeah, there was yeah. one from Colombia, I think. Yeah. No, 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 I forgot the other one. Yeah, but they're but the yeah, true. Yeah, they, they, they consider themselves the true uh, modem. Right. And they've been around a while. This is their very first release. Uh, this is from 1995, Demon Tales. Yep. And, uh, and there's great back, back. Cover, back yep. cover with the band pictures. They have great names, too, right? Yeah, they do. Well, I think the drummer's the only one that uses like a stage name, okay. and Ducious. Yeah. But everybody else, I think, uses their real name for an I name. love that. Yeah. And um, I'm pretty sure it's traditional black, but let's find out. Yeah, it'll be a surprise. Yes, it is. It's just traditional black. Cool. Yep. But this is another band that I got to see live. They played at Rouse here right. in Worcester again, and this comes with an insert yep. with, the, with the lyrics. Great. And, and what's on the back? I think it's a band picture. And Nope, nope. Uh, the... Oh yeah, that's, uh, um, you know the you yeah you I know that you I have, have that painting yeah it's Goya it's uh, yeah the witches well, Sabbath or something yeah well, yep. the, the the goat yep. the witches mm -hmm. a number of bands have used that artwork I know uh, yep. Reverend Bazaar used it yeah but yeah the, these guys are the, there's something about the South American bands I even said it to them guys when I when yeah, I when met you them, met them yeah. <laughs> well, there's something about South America there's like a ferociousness to their death metal it's like yeah. they have like a certain beat where it's like a, almost like a blast beat yeah but it's not but it's so sick right these guys are really really awesome. good at that yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it was a joy to see them live and I wish that there was more people at the show that's my only disappointment is that it wasn't happens, packed yeah. with the gills it yeah. should have been f*** on them dude right but favorites I highly, on that? Favorites on this? I love End of the Christian Era. Okay. Satan 2 is pretty cool. And one of my favorites is, uh, where is it? This one here. It's kind of hard to pronounce. It's Ungun Maman. Uh-huh. That one's pretty cool, too. All the songs have periods at the end yes, of them. That's yep. kind of funny. Demonolatry. Yeah. Tormented by the Undead. Yeah. You know, it's just a great release. Great. And then they have a number of albums after this, and, um... I had to get everything that they had when I saw them live. I bought, yep. I bought all their merch. The only they were I, happy. Only thing I didn't get was a T-shirt. I, yep. I regret that now. Yep. But yes, Mortem. Nice, cool. The Demon Tales. Right on. Okay, we're still in the letter M. Okay, up next is. I another. can't tell though. I know because this, this of is that. one. This is one of the more modern bands that have the silly logos. That is, <laughs> if they don't write their name on the spine, they have no effing clue what it is. Yeah, this is Mortiferum. This is. Okay. I believe they're from the Portland area, but I could be wrong. I know it's the Pacific Northwest. There's a lot of bands coming out of there now. Exactly, um, and it, it, it's death metal, but it's got a bit of doom in it too. So it has a, a yeah. slowness to it. It's fantastic. Great. I love the doom. And um, it's another band I got to see live. They played at Ralph's. I, I, over the last decade or so uh, they had a show there called metal thursdays right yeah and For i years. got to see so many cool bands yep. during those years mm -hmm. but the guy that did it, it stopped it because of the virus mm -hmm. and then the insert with lyri lyrics because there's about many of them and the band picture of course they you can't see them right and the, i'm pretty sure it's traditional black yeah black yep and i love the label i love it when they have the band's logo on the label yeah yep. rules or even some artwork like the old maiden ones that had sure. Eddie on the in, on the label and whatnot. Yep. And favorites. There's really only six songs on here because, like I yep. said, it's death metal, but it's doomy. So, yeah, but very long winded, but it's a good long winded. It's on profound lore too. Yeah, profound um, lore. Which they've is got a great Nocturnus label. AD. Mm. They've got some other bands. Yeah, yep. got a, it's a great label. I, I believe. I think I want to say it's Canadian, but I'm not positive. Unsure. Yeah, I'll check that. But I want to say Inhuman Effigy yep. and Faceless Apparition. I'd cool. say are my two favorites nice. from this one. 
Looking and, forward and, to that. And, and I actually have a T-shirt for this too, because when I saw him, I got the T-shirt. I love the Doomy stuff. And, so. I, and in fact, I think great. I got this when I saw him live. They had the the album on vinyl, so I was like, "Yep, yep, I'm buying it." <laughs> nice, cool. <laughs> okay, up next is Necrot, whom I've heard of. Uh, from Oakland, I believe. Oakland, California, death metal. I haven't hey, heard it, them, though. It's, it's pretty decent. I like them a lot. Uh, the first time, I've seen them twice live now. I, I saw them once in Providence. They, uh, I forget who they play with, though. I but I did see them in Providence at a place called Dusk. It's a good live venue there. Cool. And I saw them again. They played at the Palladium here in Worcester. They, they played with uh, Immolation mm -hmm. and, and Bloody Incantation. Yep. It was a really good show. A lot of people in the vinyl community have talked about this band mm -hmm. over and over again. I keep hearing mm -hmm. the name Necrot over and over. Yeah, so. a, lot, a lot of people like that. They're, they're yep. They have a more recent album that's called Mortal. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is their first full length. And they also have a, I have a compilation CD of their mm -hmm. earlier material. But this is their first full length. Blood, well, this is good, blood so I have an offer, opportunity now. Blood to hear Offerings. Yeah. And I, I believe it's on Tank Crimes. Okay. Yep, Tank Crimes um, label, okay. which is the same label as like uh, Ghoul. Yep. And um, I'm trying to think of uh, there was another. I can't think of the other band. Sure. I know Ghoul's the first other band I can think of yep. that's on that label. Um, maybe Municipal Waste at one point. Okay. And this is a cool variant too. This is a cool little green. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, opaque. Green. Well, it had a hair on it, too. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, green. Pea green, puke green. And the, the, the second time I saw them live at the Palladium, uh, they had this available on cool. on vinyl. Oh, I like the back label there. Can you show that? That one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the little pentagram. Yep. And that's actually the cover of the uh, the, the, the the CD with all the earlier material. It has that cool. on the cover. And this is also a gatefold. Yep. Pictures and in there. Pictures of the band. It's just three guys. Okay. The bass player sings. Yeah. And the lyrics over here. Yeah, and I, I think you'll like these guys. They're, yeah. They're, they're, I don't think they get too blasty. I, I think okay. they're more of the, the, the average cool. speed for death metal, but nice. it, it's great. Yeah. And, and it's such a f up cover, too. I love it. I've been meaning to get around to them, anyways. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I had the shirt of it. I'm yeah. sure my. my the, the, oh, yeah. I'm sure it turns heads when I f wear it. Sure. <laughs> of course. Nice. But that's what metal's for. Indeed. You know, and it's inlaid, too. I love it. Yeah, it's got this shiny and embossed. Mm. Kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. Necrot. Necrot. From, from Cali. Nice. And this is the band Pentacle from mm. from the Netherlands or Holland. Right. And then um, I would have loved to have gotten this on CD, but it was more difficult. It was easy. Huh. It was easy to find it on vinyl. Okay. So I ordered it on vinyl. Yeah. And this is another gatefold where it opens up, and it just has pictures of the band. Yeah. Interesting. And as you can tell by the the gray hair, that they're old time is like we are. Yeah. The, the, the Pentacle's been around since the the nineties, I want to say. Okay. Um, one of the members, uh, what's his name? Wayne. Wayne's. Um, he also was in the band Asphyx at one point. Okay. So that so they have a similarity to Asphyx. Great. And his vocals sound a lot like Mountain Van Drunen. Interesting. Similar to that. That kind so, of I'm gasping for my last yeah, breath of and, air. And they, <laughs> and, they, they, and they have a yep. saying, uh, keep the keep the ancient spirit alive. I think that's the, what it is. It should say it. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget the ancient feeling. It still rules. <laughs> that, that's what they, have, they go for. Yeah. They, they yeah. got the old school sound. And cool. I can't say enough good things about Pentacle. Nice. This is their most recent. Yeah, I'll get it. This is their most released recent studio album yep and they have i want to say at least two other album two or three other albums okay. and some eps and stuff yeah they but, sound interesting but, but an excellent yeah. band yeah specter of the eight ropes that's the name of the album mm -hmm. i'm not really I really i haven't really delved into the lyrics to understand what the heck they're talking about here. sure but but it's really cool cover art too. It yeah. looks like it looks like the hanging Nazis. Cause yeah, the, maybe yeah. The, the, the way the helmets look, but it's it's weird because it, this Those. is World War One helmets and yeah. these look like World War Two. So it, I agree. So maybe it's a mix of Nazis getting killed. Sure. I don't know. <laughs> Got favorite tracks. Favorite tracks. The opening track, Behold, Denial, Despair, Cruelty, okay. Now Spit Forth, Death, nice. Mesmerizing Depths of the Abyss, mm -hmm. and then the, then the final track, Emerging from a Sea Ablaze. But the whole whole album, it's one of those ones where it's like, it's hard to pick a favorite. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I love Pentacle. Cool. Nice. Awesome. Okay, up next is Perdition Temple. Perdition Temple is... Uh, there, there was another death metal band a while back called Angel Corpse, mm -hmm. and the, the yep. guitarist in that band, Gene Pelubicki, he 
formed a different band when Angel Corpse dissolved, and this is it. This is Perdition Temple. I've and, heard of them, but I knew um, nothing. This is that. their third release. They have okay. two other ones before that. I know one's called Edict of the Antichrist Elect, mm -hmm. or something like that. And yeah. I, forget, I forget the name of the second one. Okay. And this one is Sacrament of Dissension? Sacraments, Sacraments. of Dissension. Yeah. And, um, Great cover. Uh, Florida band. That they're from Florida. Mm -hmm. Angel Corpse. Uh, it was a mix of regions. I know Gene was from Florida and Pete was from Kansas City. Mm -hmm. and so it was a it was a mix. Right. But they're definitely uh, influenced a lot by Morbid Angel. The way Gene yeah. plays, writes his riffs, and the, yeah. the way the solos are. That sounds a lot like Trey. Right. And 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 the, the, the unique thing about this album is, is, I think this is the first one out of the three where he does the vocals too. Yeah. Well, like the, I know the second album, the, the the guy from Black Witchery did the vocals because because okay. they're another Floridian band. Yeah. But this is just straight up death metal. Cool. Frantic. Yeah. And this one's a cool variant too. It's like a. Almost orange like marble. orangey, marbly. Yep. And I think I'm pretty sure it has an insert too. Oh. Sure. Yep. And it has an insert with the yep. the band members. What would and so many death metal bands do without Morbid Angel? Seriously. Yeah. I hear them all the time in so many bands now. You know, and it's never a bad thing to be influenced by no. them, especially yeah. their, their the '90s and late '80s material. And yeah. I think there's a poster in here too. Yeah. It's being a pain. Sure, sure. There you go. Show that back cover too. Yeah, there's a poster as well. Of okay. Because because cover artist is crazy. Yeah. I'm not sure who the artist is though. No. It reminds me of Chris Verwemp stuff mm -hmm. from Europe. He does a lot of artwork over there. Yep. And here's the back cover with the cool little logo, Scully upside yep. down cross thing. And yeah, I like it. As you can see, it's on good old trustworthy Hells Hells Hubbingers records again. Nice. Now this. You can't go wrong with that label. No, absolutely. You know, there's, there's certain modern labels. They're one of them. Dark Descent. Yep. So many. There's so many good ones. Cool. Nice. And this one's a tongue twister. Trying to say. Yeah, this I'm not band, gonna try. Try and say this band's name. It's a, it's a German title, even though it's a band from Chile, but it's a Lovecraftian reference. So I had to get their material. It's Unausprechlichen Kulten. Yeah, I'm and not trying is, that. And this is the album. Well, it's actually EP. It's Lucifer, Poseidon, and Cthulhu. And it's mm -hmm. a it's a familiar artwork motif yeah. where the creatures pick up somebody and stick them in their mouth. But I think it's more of a Cthulhu-ish creature this I time. I see that, yeah. It's got the tentacles and stuff like that. Yep. And the dead bodies and stuff. And this is a gatefold where it's got the, the band members and yep. notes and stuff over here. Cool. And then... In this release, the, on one side, it's uh, it's two studio tracks. Yep. And it is the back cover, by the way. Yep. With the crazy ass like pentagramish creature thingy. Something. Yeah, because his claws and yep. his head. It's like it's almost like a butterfly demon. Yeah. You know? But one side's studio tracks from these guys, yep. and then the second is uh, recorded. I'm not sure where where it was recorded live. I'm sure it says inside here. Yeah. Mm. Yep, it was recorded in the Columbia Theater in Berlin, Tempelhof. So I'm assuming that's Germany, Germany because right. the picture of them here. There's looks Germanic like themes going on all over the place. Yeah. I'm assuming that this picture was them at uh, one of the remaining parts of the Berlin Wall. I think that's the Brandenburg Gate. Maybe I, I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it looks what it looks like. It's kind of cool imagery yeah. with the. Yeah. But these guys are, it's death metal, but it's very discordant. The, okay. the, the chords that they choose yep. and the, the time signatures, it's, it's mm -hmm. very, very hard to wrap your brain around it. Sure. But it's it's great. Cool. I love it. You know, it's, and like I said earlier in the thing that I love Lovecraftian things. Yeah. How could I go wrong with a right. band with that title? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, all their albums are similar to where they have a Lovecraftian reference. And I'm sure they can say their band name flawlessly, yeah, yeah, unlike yeah. us. Yeah. Right. I mean, look at the band, the song title, Azatoth. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, sure. <laughs> all right. Cool. But, but Anas Prauslichen Colton from Chile. Nice. San Santiago, Santiago, Chile, so they're from the capital. Right. But uh, another South American band, Ferociousness. Yeah. you got to be prepared for that. Cool. Highly recommended. Right on. All right, so that's ten albums. Yeah. Kind of excited. Um, it was kind of hard to choose because I have. Uh, I don't mean to brag, but I got a huge music collection. So, yeah, he so does. it was kind of hard to like. Yeah. Oh, which one should I pick for him? You know? Yeah. And, Yep. So so maybe there'll be a second installment or even a third because I have so much music right. to share. Even with Discogs, it was probably a bit of a challenge. Oh yeah. You know, you go through that, you're still like, I have so much stuff. Yes. Yeah. 
Cool. So, yeah, so I'm going to take these records home and listen to them, and then I'm going to get back to you guys in this same episode, so don't go away, and I will tell you about each and every one of them. So, definitely stick around. And I'm back in Vermont. So let's get to those 10 records that Eric has chosen for me. And since they're a little bit new to me specifically, I'm going to be using some notes. So there you go. First up is Dead Congregation with Somber Doom. It was released in 2016. Two-song EP from this death metal band. Uh, the first track is Slow and Doomy. The second track is Fast and Blasty, which I really like. I like the contrast of that quite a bit. Uh, seems to show that the band has some range, which is also pretty cool. As for favorites of the two songs, I dig Redemptive Immolation. In fact, Eric said that was his favorite song on the disc as well. Uh, it's the slow track, but the other one is almost as good too. Uh, my verdict is that I like this album, uh, this EP rather, and I wish to hear more from this band. Next up is Death Hammer with Phantom Knights from 2010. Uh, I catch a little bit of early Slayer meets early Creator on this one, along with some of the chaos from the first uh, Onslaught album. Kind of dig that, pretty old school. Uh, Midnight fans might dig this album a bit, I was thinking. Also, the drum tempo is a little bit loose, kind of like early Creator. Uh, those first couple albums don't have the tightest drums and guitar on them, but we love them anyways, of course. Also, some solid and catchy riffs. I thought that was what really caught my attention on this album quite a bit. As for favorites, I have a few. Uh, Blood Token, Devilish Dirge, Tornado Blitzkrieg, and Queen Death. Of those, Tornado Blitzkrieg was also Eric's favorite, or one of his favorites, so I would suggest that song, since we both agreed on it. Uh, my verdict is I like this, and I might actually buy it. Next up is Innsmouth with The Departure of Shub Niggeroth. It was a demo that originally came out in 2009, but the vinyl version was 2019. As Eric said, and as I said, these are demo tracks uh, from this death slash black metal band. Production is pretty raw, uh, much like a demo for a black and death metal band would be. Uh, it's chuggy and lo-fi with some early Bathory influence in the mix, and it is a little repetitive of times, kind of a thing. As for favorites, I did have one in particular. It was Thrice Blessed Shub Niggeroth. Pretty cool track. My verdict is this is okay, but I'd like to hear if they've progressed a bit since this point. Next up is Morbid Saint with Spectrum of Death. Uh, this actually was released in 1990. Uh, Eric said 88. Off by two years. It's all right. Uh, the singer is definitely channeling 80s era Mila from Creator. I think Eric talked a little bit about Creator in this one. I hear it as well. Uh, favorites are definitely Burned at the Stake. Assassin, Scars, and Beyond the Gates of Hell. Of those tracks, Eric also liked Burned at the Stake and Beyond the Gates of Hell, so check out those two tracks. The acoustic instrumental, Spectrum of Death, uh, sounds like it was from a warped tape or a slightly warped tape. I'm not sure that was intentional or not, but it's kind of what I'm hearing. Uh, the verdict is I actually do like this album and would get an OG of it if it was priced right. Next up is Mortem from Peru. With the Demon Tales came out originally in 1995. Peruvian death metal, kind of a lo-fi morbid angel meets early possessed in a lot of ways. Uh, production quality varies from track to track, which is pretty interesting. Some tracks are better than others production-wise. As for favorites, uh, A Demon Tale is definitely one of those. Vomit of the Earth and Tormented by the Undead. Um, Eric had different favorites, but maybe he would agree with my favorites. I don't know. He seemed to like quite a bit of the album. So my verdict is that I like this, but I need to hear more recent material to see if I would like that even more. Next up is Mortiferum with the album Disgorge from Psychotic Depths. came out in 2019. Uh, very slow and doomy at times, and a total blur at other times. Um, the downtune sludgy parts, uh, for me, get a little bit street cleaner era godflesh at times. Uh, there's also occasional banging on actual metal from the drummers that kind of secures the slight industrial flavor that happens. Uh, favorites are definitely Putrid Ascension. That's probably my very favorite song on the album. Eric had a couple of other favorites, uh, different from mine, but you should check out all three tracks, because why not? My verdict is this is okay, but I don't know, maybe I need more time with it. Next up is Necrot with Blood Offerings from 2017. Nice balance here between melody and brutality. I always like that kind of contrast. Um, it's certainly paying homage to old school death metal. That seems pretty obvious, but they aren't clones of any of the classic bands, which I also like quite a bit. Tons of killer riffs here with some actual variety, which is what keeps this album interesting for me. Favorites are Rather Be Dead, Shadows and Light, Breathing Machine, and Layers of Darkness. Of those tracks, Breathing Machine is probably my very favorite, so that'd be the one I would recommend to you. 
Verdict is I like this and would probably buy it. Next up is Pentacle with Spectre of the Eight Ropes, came out in 2019. Combo of Death and Thrash and Doom, especially the Death and the Thrash. Um, I would say that during the moments where Death and Thrash are at the four, it's hard not to compare them to Pestilence. Uh, definitely hearing the Van Drunen influence in the vocals, though we also know that the singer in this particular band was in Asphyx at one time, so there's that. Production is okay, but the songwriting is definitely there, so it more than makes up for it. Favorites are Now Spit Forth Death and Blessed by Fire. Uh, those two, Now Spit Forth Death, great track. Eric also liked it quite a bit, so I'm recommending that one. The verdict is I like this, and I might pick it up. Next up is Perdition Temple with Sacraments of Dissension, came out in 2020. Nice variety of solid riffs here. The leads are particularly great. Great drumming. A lot of the musicians are on point on this release, so pretty cool. Favorites are Desolation Usurper, Carnal Harvest, Red Reaping, and Antichrist. I would recommend all four of those tracks. Verdict is I like this, and I would want to hear more from this band for sure. Next up is That Band with Lucifer, Poseidon, Cthulhu. Originally came out in 2013. This particular version came out in 2019. This is a reissue of the original EP, except it has added bonus live tracks on the B-side. Uh, Chilean death metal band, as Eric mentioned. Pretty raw stuff. Uh, Shades of Immolation and Incantation are also in there. I guess it gets the job done, I suppose. Uh, favorites from the EP side, I'm going with Nephrim Ka Narlathotep, Starry Wisdom. Uh, pretty decent track. Uh, the verdict is this is okay, but it's not grabbing me in the way all the other albums I just mentioned did. Um, yeah, and I'm still not going to try to pronounce this band name. Screw that. So there's the tally right over there. Not too bad. Eric did a pretty good job at picking albums. I liked most of them. No dislikes. Pretty cool. And I definitely have some albums to buy, which is great. And the whole point of this, really. Of course, I'd like to thank Eric for coming on the show and let me shoot at his place. Future episodes, I am going to have different guest co-hosts, a variety of people, different faces here and there. You'll be getting that, getting to see their cool collections and their album recommendations, which I appreciate. Hopefully you do as well. Of course, Eric will be back. There'll be a part two and a part three with him down the line. So if you're looking forward to that, like I am, then great. And it might almost go without saying, but if I do end up buying any of the albums we've talked about today, I'll definitely be going more into depth on them in future episodes of Vinyl Hall. Of course. So I'm willing to bet that some of you dig these albums, these bands, some of these tracks. You should definitely let me know that in the comments. Also, if you have album recommendations based on these bands or bands that are adjacent to them genre-wise, let me know that. Let me know if you dig this show. Um, this is a new show. This is the first episode of it, so I want to see where I'm going to go with it. Your input is just as valid as mine, so definitely let me know in the comments. Of course, if this is your first time here at my channel, hi, I'm Matt. This is the Accusation Network. I do metal vinyl collecting videos every single week. Check out all my playlists because I do more than just this type of show. I do over a dozen shows at this point. So definitely check all of those playlists out. I think you'll really dig what I have to offer. I think. Check it out. And it wouldn't be a YouTube video unless I said these three magic things. If you like this video, definitely give it one of these. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And share this video with some friends. Because sharing is caring, right? So thanks for watching and ever forward.